My name is Mensah Isaac, and we are going to look at accounting for depreciation. Depreciation is the reduction in the value of an asset due to wear and tear or a fluctuation of time. Dude. And for depreciation, we have to take note of these key terminologies. Good. So we have one month ownership basis and full year depreciation. When the question tells you to calculate your permission on the basis of one month ownership, what you are going to do is you are going to consider the amount or the number of months the asset has been in use. So if the asset was bought in November and the year is ending 31st December, you know that from November to December is two months, right? So you are going to consider the month that is 2 over 12. So you are going to what? consider the month in use. So if the rate for the depreciation is 10% and your cost is 50,000, you are going to consider the month the asset, 50,000 asset has been in use. And for this, it's 2 over 12 because it's November to December and we know November to December is two. Good. That's what the one month ownership basis is trying to say. So if the asset was bought on 1st July, we know that from July to December is what? Six months. So the asset has been in use for six months. So we are going to charge six over 12. That's what one month ownership basis is trying to say. Good. For full year depreciation, what you are going to do is you don't have to consider the number of months the asset has been in use. If it was bought November, you are going to charge a full year depreciation. That's 12 over 12. You get it. And 12 over 12, we know that it's 1. So any number times a 1 is that same number. You get it. So for full year depreciation, the number of months the asset has been in use is not considered. Good. We also have to know the methods of depreciation. Straight line method. and reducing balance. You are going to focus on these two. Good. For straight line, the same depreciation is charged over the years. Okay, so let's say 2019, we had a depreciation of 10,000 for the asset. For 2020, we are going to still get the same 10,000 for depreciation. 2021, we are still going to get that 10,000 for depreciation. Good. So let's say our percentage was 10%. Our cost was 50,000. Okay. We are getting 5,000. Let's say this for 2021. Okay. When we come to 2022, it's still going to be the same depreciation we are going to get. That is the 5,000. That is what the straight line method is trying to see and with the reducing balance the reducing balance tries to say that we are going to calculate for on cost for the first year the subsequent years we are going to calculate on its net book value so let's say 2019 2019 the rate was 10% the cost was let's say 100,000 which is and we are having 10,000. Good. So, for the first year, we calculated on the cost of the assets. Good. The second year, which is 2020, we are going to calculate on the net book value. And net book value is the cost minus the depreciation. So, 100,000 here minus 10,000. So, the net book value here is going to be 90,000. And we are getting 9,000 for the decision. Do you get it? That's how the reducing balance is worked. So for 2021, we are also going to take the cost, the new cost here, which is the net book value, minus this, then we we'll calculate the 10% on it. That's what reducing balance is all about. 
good. So we move on to the accounts involved. Okay. The accounts involved. Where the accounts involved, we have the assets account. Any assets that will be given to you in the question. Okay. It can be motor vehicle, it can be plant and machinery. Any assets that will be given to you. So, when you come here, we have your asset account. Any item or assets that you buy, you will debit it. Good. So, if we bought asset for, let's say, 10,000, we are going to debit that 10,000 in the asset account. And you know that for assets, when our assets are increasing, we have to debit, right? So, we've bought the assets and our assets are now increasing. We have more assets in our premises. So, that 10,000 will be debited in the asset account. Good. So, 10,000. And let's say we bought another asset, 50,000. We are going to debit. So, whilst we are debiting here, we have another account called the cash account. With the cash account, we know that we are buying the assets. Good. So when we are buying the assets, our cash is what? Reducing. So when our cash is reducing, we will what? Credit cash here. So let's say we had 10,000 here. We bought 10,000. We also bought 50,000. Good. So whilst we are debiting our asset accounts, we are also crediting our cash accounts. Good. Because there has been an a decrease in our assets and we know that a decrease in our assets we have to what credit the account as cash is an asset you get it good so whilst there has been an increase in our assets there has been a decrease in an asset good so whilst debiting assets we are going to credit what cash good so when these assets or any of the assets we bought we sold any of them in the course of the year or in the subsequent year we are going to recall that amount here. So let's say we sold this cash, okay? We sold this asset, 10,000 assets. We are going to recall that 10,000 here. The question will say the asset which was 10,000 was sold for 5,000. Though that 10,000 asset was sold for 5,000. But you are going to record the actual cost of the asset at the credit side. Do you get it? So Instead of us recording that 5,000 here, we are going to record that true cost or the amount we bought the assets at the credit side. Do you, got, do you get it? So for now, our asset is what? Decreasing. So when our assets are decreasing, we've sold our assets, okay? Our assets, assets are decreasing, so we have to what? Credit that asset account. Good. When we come to disposal, So once we credited here with the actual cost of the assets, when we come to cash, we sold the assets. So now we are receiving cash, right? Our asset is increasing. Therefore, we have to what? Debit. And when we are debiting for cash, we are going to write the actual amount we sold the assets. Okay. So this 10,000 assets was sold for 5,000. We are going to record that actual amount we sold the asset. They get it. Here will contain the cost of the asset sold. Then here will contain the what? Actual amount we sold the asset. Good. So when we come to disposal side, this 10,000 here will be seen here. Then this cash amount we see here will be seen here as 5,000. Do you get it? Good. So, I'm going to give you a typical format of how these accounts are opened. So, with the asset account, it will involve the cost bought, okay, the amount bought, the cost of the asset bought here. Then that same asset when we sell it we are going to credit it with that same amount okay so the cost 
should also be here. Good. Do you get it? This is the typical way of recording in the assets account. So when we come to the cash account, our cost bought, the amount we bought the assets will be here. Then the amount we sold the assets, not the cost, the actual amount we sold the assets for, okay, will be here. The amount sold for will be what? Here. Good. So, the typical format is the cost we bought the assets will be debited in the assets account. When we sell that asset for any amount, that same cost is what we are coming to credit in the asset account. When we come to the cash, the amount we bought the assets will be credited here, the cost of the asset. When we come here, that actual amount we sold the assets for will be what? Debited. Good. So, this for the typical format. Then we'll go to provision for depreciation. Good. So when we come to provision for depreciation, to make things simple for us, we have to know that the yearly depreciation of the assets we have in our premises will be recorded at the credit side. Do you get it? The yearly depreciation, if we have four assets, that year, when we add their depreciations together, that actual amount is what we are going to record at the credit side. Do you get it? So let's say 2021, we had a depreciation to be 10,000. Okay, so that whole year, the depreciation we had or the depreciation that was charged is what we are going to see at the credit side. When we come to the debit side, if that same year, during that same year, we sold any asset, we are going to accumulate that depreciation for that particular asset. And we will see that asset, the cost of that asset. So let's say we sold one asset, and for that asset only, its total depreciation was let's say 5,000. So that's what we are going to see at the debit side. Good. So for the format of provision for depreciation, our yearly depreciation. Is what we are going to see here. Then our depreciation for depreciation of assets sold is what we are going to see here. Do you get it? You. So this is the typical format of some of the accounts that we will be opening. Good. So we dispose of. account as we are having this year and having this year we will also have our provision for the assets sold here you get it the depreciation the assets accumulated will also be found here so when we come here, we have disposal here too. So that disposal, sorry, provision for depreciation of that asset is what we are going to see here. Do you get it? So here will be in the name of disposal. So the disposal, then we record the amount here. So when you come here, you are going to credit the accumulated depreciation of that asset you sold. Do you get it? Good. So whilst we are recording the cost we sold the assets here and the actual amount we sold the assets for here, we are going to also record the actual depreciation the asset accumulated during that period also here. They get it. Good. So that's all for the accounts. And we also have depreciation.
So for provision for depreciation, it's going to have balances. Balances carry down and balances brought down. But for depreciation, there are no balances for depreciation. So this is your depreciation account. So when you come here, no depreciation is an expense and it will be debited. But provision is what? Credited. The yearly depreciation for provision is what? Credited. So when we come here, the depreciation we had for that year is what we are going to see here. Okay. So when we are done with this, after recording the yearly depreciation, we will just close this off. There are no balances. When we have any other year to calculate for depreciation, when we go to that year, to, let's say here is 2020. 2020. We've closed our account. We've closed our account. Now we are in 2021. There is no balances to be carried forward. So when we come, we we'll concentrate on 2021's what? Depreciation. So when we come here, 2021 depreciation, we just record it here. Do you get it? Yes. But for provision of depreciation, the balances carried down will be brought forward to the next year. If there are any other years to calculate for depreciation, you get it. So that's all for our theory aspects for accounting for depreciation. So we'll meet the next time to solve practice set on depreciation. Thank you very much. And my name is Mensah Ivy.